So we already talked about the Z test, and really we're going to talk about a variety of tests that all kind of follow this logic and these ways of thinking and have a similar type of math, therefore, that underlie them. So every one of these tests we're talking about will really have some kind of observed difference in the numerator and some kind of expected difference, that is, by chance, what could I expect, right, in the denominator. And so it's kind of a signal to noise ratio, right? So uh, the, the numerator is what's the signal I got in my data? What's the difference I actually observed? The denominator is, well, what's the noise in the data? That is how variable are things and what kind of differences could you get just by chance? And the way that we calculate this for a lot of our tests is simply gonna be getting a statistic and subtracting the, the expected value, the parameter, right? That gets you the difference and dividing it by the standard error of your estimate, the statistic, right? Which we already looked at how to do that, for example, for a Z test. So this is kind of what I call a universal hypothesis test structure, right? And they all kind of come back to that signal versus noise. And it all comes back to the logic of a sampling distribution, which is, you know, what can I have as the expected value under that distribution? What was it that I observed? What's the difference between those two things? And then what kind of, you know, differences can occur by chance? What's the variability, right? The dispersion of that distribution. And that helps me to know whether this difference is a big enough difference, right? So if, if this, you know, yields a quotient of three, then that tells us the difference we observe is three times as big as the difference we could expect by chance. And so if that's the case, we might say, wow, this is probably a real difference, right? So that's kind of the logic that we use. So when we're talking about interpreting this, the classic view and what we'll mostly deal with in this class is simply looking at once we get that test statistic, what p-value does it give us? So for example, when you do a Z test and you get the Z statistic, that Z value gives you a p-value. And if that p-value is small enough, conventionally less than or equal to 0.05, then we conclude that this test is significant and we reject the null hypothesis. If that p-value is greater than 0.05, we would say that that test was not significant and we would retain the null hypothesis. This is kind of the classic interpretation that we'll focus on in this class. Nowadays, a lot of people kind of go beyond this. You know, you've had people challenge the idea of how we should look at and use p-values, right? Um, though really in, in practice, people generally adhere to this process. But what people often add to this is they provide confidence intervals, right? Confidence intervals are, for simplicity's sake here, we don't have to teach them in this class. They're the idea of kind of a range within which the true value is likely to lie. It's the easiest way to understand them without going into more detail. But these are often added. So you'll see these in a lot of reports with statistics nowadays. Um, and the other thing, which we will touch on in this class, effect sizes. And these are often kind of called measures of practical significance. So statistical significance, this idea, says, are these things likely to happen by chance? And if not, then we say there's probably something real going on here, right? Significant effect. However, an effect size sim does not simply say, is this unlikely to happen by chance? But it says, well, how big of a difference is this really, right? So if you think about, imagine I have a treatment and this treatment causes a significant difference in you know some disease this actually happened real recently um the editor of a leading journal in oncology cancer uh, came out and gave a, a talk about his concerns that a lot of papers they're publishing have significant effects but these significant effects probably have very little clinical meaning so for example one drug had like increased the median survival time by like two weeks well is it really worth it to go on all this additional drug and stuff to survive 14 days more? Now, those 14 days were significantly longer, which suggests the drug had an actual causal effect in producing that extra time. But the question clinically then is, well, is that 14 days a big enough effect to care about, right? And that kind of is what effect sizes try to get at. So we'll talk a little bit more about that in class as an extension of basic hypothesis testing. And I think really a best interpretation is both, right? Is this effect likely a real thing, right? That's, it's not just due to chance. And then, well, let's talk about how big this effect is. Is it small, is it medium, is it large? You know, what kind of implications might it have in the real world?
All right, so that is hypothesis testing 101, which sets the stage for us to move into some of our real inferential tests here coming up in the next weeks.